When discussing World War II tank warfare and German panzer aces, it's no surprise that the feats of commanders in the renowned Tiger or Panther tanks often steal the spotlight. However, this focus on their achievements can overshadow the fact that the German army had numerous other tankers who achieved significant victories with more modest vehicles. Among these was the Sturmgeschutz or Stug series of armored fighting vehicles. Technically, the Stugs were not tanks, but rather assault guns, specialized armored fighting vehicles built on a tank chassis with a fixed forward-facing cannon. Originally designed as mobile assault guns for infantry direct fire support, they were later modified and used as tank destroyers. The Stug series saw continuous development throughout the war, progressing through variants A to E before being equipped with a longer, more powerful Stuk 40L-43 gun in the Model F. The 75mm Stormkanon 40L-48 gun, fitted to later F-8 and G models, was capable of penetrating the frontal armor of most Allied tanks, making it highly effective in the tank destroyer role. Despite having overall armor protection that was less than comparable tanks, the Stug 3 provided excellent protection where it was most needed, across the frontal arc. The Stug 3 weighed less and was more agile both on and off-road, due to its lack of a turret and thinner overall armor, compared to other tanks. Its lighter weight reduced strain on the drivetrain, leading to fewer breakdowns than other German tanks. As a result, the Stug 3 had the highest availability of any track German combat vehicle. With its low silhouette and strongly armored hull, the Stug 3 proved to be one of the most significant weapons of the German forces during World War II. Overall, the Sturmgeschutz series of AFVs proved highly successful, serving on all fronts as assault guns, mobile artillery, and tank destroyers. The high kill rate of the Stug stemmed from its low silhouette, which made it easy to camouflage and a difficult target for enemies. While Tigers and Panthers have earned greater infamy, the assault guns collectively destroyed more tanks at a far lower cost. Stug crews were selected from among the best candidates, and were considered the elite of the Heer's artillery units. The results certainly justified the effort as assault gun units held an impressive record of tank kills. By the spring of 1944, Stug units were believed to have claimed around 20,000 enemy tanks. And over the years, the Stug arm produced plenty of its own brave and decorated commanders. Today, we'll introduce you to one of them, Uberwachmister Hugo Pramazic. Born in 1914, Hugo Pramazic began his military career in the Reichswehr as a field artillery gunner. During the Polish campaign, he served with the 152nd Artillery Regiment of the 52nd Infantry Division. Following his service in France, he held various reserve and replacement positions, including a posting at the artillery school in Uterbach. Upon graduation, he was assigned to the 667th Assault Gun Battalion, where he assumed command of a platoon of Stugs in the 2nd Battery of the 667th. The successful combat career of Hugo Pramazic truly began when he was issued with one of the first Stugs equipped with the long-barreled Stormkanon 40L-48 gun. The 667th was deployed as part of Army Group Mitte, and like other assault gun units, its primary role was to support infantry attacks in crucial sectors and provide invaluable anti-tank support in defensive operations. It was in the role of providing anti-tank support that the battalion truly excelled, a skill that proved vital, as it was soon deployed to the German reserve salient. Situated closest to Moscow, 
This bulge in the front had faced continuous attacks throughout 1942, necessitating the urgent deployment of the assault guns of Stug Battalion 667. It was here that Pramazic would begin to forge his reputation, demonstrating his prowess by destroying numerous Russian tanks. After intense fighting in August and September, the 667th successfully repelled several heavy Soviet attacks near Rezev, but suffered heavy casualties in the process. Consequently, the battalion was temporarily withdrawn. However, on September 15th, the Soviets launched another massive assault. With only his platoon of three Stugs available, Pramazic swiftly positioned his unit to confront the advancing enemy. Facing overwhelming odds and likely outgunned, Pramazic's small Stug unit appeared to have little chance of success against the Soviets. Recognizing the futility of directly engaging the Soviet armored column, Pramazic and his comrades made the strategic decision to patiently await the enemy tanks, allowing them to close in within 500 meters range. As the enemy approached under cover, Pramazic ordered his platoon to halt, dismounting himself to personally scout the situation facing his small force. After assessing the terrain and enemy disposition, he moved his Stugs into concealed positions on the flank of the advancing Soviet tanks. As the platoon maneuvered into firing positions, one of the T-34s seemingly spotted them and swiftly rotated its turret, opening fire. By sheer luck, despite the close range of the shot, the round bounced harmlessly off. With lightning speed, the Stug fired a heartbeat later, obliterating the T-34. Pramazic's platoon unleashed a torrent of fire into the sides and rear of the Soviet tanks. As the Soviets retaliated, Pramazic swiftly ordered his Stugs to disengage from their concealed positions and relocate to new firing positions on the left flank. Despite the enemy's counterfire, the Stug's low profile, agility, and concealed movement allowed them to execute the maneuver seamlessly. As Pramazic maneuvered, the Soviet tank had started advancing toward his platoon, closing the range significantly. Now, the nearest T-34s were a mere 275 meters away, well within the optimal firing range of T-34. Amidst the intense exchange, the Stug platoon spotted KV-1 heavy tanks advancing to bolster the stalled T-34s. Despite being hit by a round from a KV-1, which fortunately caused no damage, Pramazic's gunner returned fire, his shot ricocheting off the KV-1's armor. Now, it became a race to reload and fire accurately, as the first to do so would likely destroy the other. With a resounding roar, the Stug 75mm gun thundered, and the KV-1 shuddered to a halt, billowing smoke. The intense fighting continued, with Pramazic's heavily outnumbered platoon continuing to inflict damage on the advancing T-34s and KV-1 heavy tanks. Despite the odds, they managed to hold their ground and effectively counter the Soviet assault. Utilizing the terrain to their advantage, the platoon skillfully flanked the Soviet advance and employed covered rolling terrain to maximum effect. Moving swiftly from position to position, Pramazic's Stug platoon found themselves engaged in combat against both tanks and infantry. Despite the challenging circumstances, Pramazic displayed exceptional skill and courage, destroying 24 enemy tanks on that particular day, often with just a single shot to those that had broken through their defenses. From the 15th to 28th, Pramazic and his platoon remained engaged in combat alongside their battalion, repelling repeated Soviet assaults in the Rezev vicinity. On September 28th, 
Pramazic's platoon received orders to cover the extreme flank of their division. Despite facing repeated attacks from Soviet tanks with infantry support, the Stugs steadfastly held their position. They continued to hold their ground until they had expended all of their ammunition, at which point they made an attempt to withdraw to prevent being encircled. Before his platoon could disengage, Primozic displayed remarkable bravery. Despite being under fire, he left his vehicle, and using a steel tow cable, attached it to an immobilized Stug in his platoon. With his own vehicle, he then towed the disabled Stug from the battlefield. Upon returning to his assault gun, Pramazic personally provided cover for the successful withdrawal of both vehicles against infantry attacks, manning a machine gun. Meanwhile, the Russian attacks persisted. Their most significant assault on the Rezev salient began on November 24, 1942, with Operation Mars. Pramazic's actions once again proved pivotal in the defense, as he destroyed seven tanks in a single day. In the span of five months, from September 1942 to January 1943, Hugo Pramazic achieved the remarkable feat of destroying 60 enemy tanks. For his extraordinary courage and achievements, he was awarded both the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross and the Oak Leaves. Notably, Pramazic earned the distinction of being the first non-commissioned officer in the German army to receive the Oak Leaves to the Knight's Cross a rare honor bestowed upon only seven NCOs in total. Stug Battalion 667 demonstrated an extraordinary run of success during its four months in action on the northern and central sectors of the Eastern Front. Despite having only 21 assault guns at their disposal, they achieved remarkable results destroying a total of 468 enemy tanks during that period. Hugo Pramazic emerged as the top ace within the unit, showcasing exceptional skill and leadership on the battlefield. In the course of his career, he was credited with destroying 68 tanks, and all within a time span of just five months. Moreover, the Stug Model F, tested and proven in the heat of battle, played a pivotal role in their success, solidifying its reputation as a formidable weapon of war. Hugo Pramazic received his officer's commission in February 1943 and subsequently served as an instructor until 1945. During this time, his training unit was deployed to confront the advancing American forces on the Western Front. Pramazic's journey took a new turn when he was captured by American forces on May 8, 1945, marking the end of the Second World War for him. Fortunately, he survived the war and went on to live a long life. He passed away on March 18, 1996, in Fulda, Germany.